Holy shit. I competed in the BC Provincial FTC Championship, a robotics competition that is aimed at pre-university students to educate and raise the popularity of STEM education. My goal? To assert dominance, to avoid suspicion, and to have something to hand in for my capstone project. The first steps of competing in a robotics competition was to, of course, build a robot. So I put on the hard hat and got to building. After that slight mishap, I made this, then this, then this, and finally this. Now this version of the robot was already performing above average. In fact, this model of the robot got me first place in ranking for the first official scrimmage. However, it was far from ideal. You see, this robot only served as a base, a skeleton without the flesh. There were still many improvements that could be made to enhance its performance, one of which was a tape measure mechanism, which you can earn a dramatic amount of points if done correctly. So I sat down and made myself a tape measure. As you can see, for the time being, it is not very effective. I kept on working on it, however, and it will eventually lead to some truly beautiful things. But that's for later. Anyways, for the time being, let's talk about my arch nemesis, Code. The FTC control system has an integrated blocks code generator that allows new users to code using a scratch-like drag and drop method. Then, the system converts that into Java and runs it on the robot. This was working fairly well for me until this point. So why would I move my grubby, slimy hands towards Android Studio, the most annoying and confusing way to code the robot? It all started when the second scrimmage had just ended. Unfortunately, this event was remote, so I couldn't actually see much of what other teams were up to, and I had no idea if I was still in the lead or not. And so, I decided to check the scoring spreadsheet. The official event website had every team's games and scores conveniently listed out in the Google spreadsheet, so I took advantage of that and did some stalking. The results shook me to my very core. Oh. Oh no. Within the six matches I've played, I've scored a total of 774 points. This team scored 982. <laughs> this meant that in order for me to catch up, I would have to get my stuff together and make some drastic changes to my robot. Luckily, I had a plan. You see, this year's game was designed in a way so that any object scored on the Alliance shipping hub in Autonomous would be counted two times. So theoretically speaking, if I had scored three objects on the third level of the shipping hub, instead of the 18 points I would normally get, I would receive 36 points. And that's what I did. First, I need to make the robot retrieve an element. However, the normal method of just making the drive motors go forward isn't always reliable, and I would rather not risk getting the robot stuck within the first 30 seconds of the game. So, that was out of the question. That's when I found this. Roadrunner. It's a motion planning library that can allow robots to do some very, very impressive stuff. There was one issue, however. For the library to work, I will have to convert all my blocks code, throw it into Android Studio, then add the library. You can probably imagine, I was not a big fan of this development. Now that we have the library installed, we will have to do some tuning. Yeah, it sucked. A lot. After that, I installed...
Meep meep. I made this thing that's really impressive, but I don't know what it's called. After copying and pasting all of this into my code, and going through a lot of unnecessary pain, this was the result. Oh yeah, and the tape measure was working really well at this point too. At this point, I was ready for competition. But wait, before we proceed to the championship, I'm required by this presentation rubric to reflect on my core competency development. I believe the reason why this project is strongly tied to creative and critical thinking is pretty obvious. So let's talk about communication. Throughout the events, I was constantly communicating with my alliance partners to coordinate match start positions and autonomous routines. This skill also shines when something goes wrong on the field. Through quick communications, some situations can be corrected, others stop before it gets worse. Did I succeed in developing this competency? I'll let you be the judge. And now, 